Welcome back to the comic book ASM artist. Today we're going to be doing a uh, flip through this book by Alex Ross here called Mythology. Uh, this was a collection of his work at DC Comics. I know Marvel did one of these too, and I want to get it. But uh, this was one of like the first big art books he did like this. Yes, yeah, so I guess you can consider this kind of a Thanksgiving video, but not really. Because, you know, who's not thankful for Alex Ross, right? But, um, yeah, truthfully, though, Thanksgiving is always hard for me because uh, in 1999, that was the day that, uh, the day before Thanksgiving is when my dad passed away. So, and uh, this year is going to mark uh, 20 years that he hasn't been around. So, not too huge on it because it's a constant reminder of that. But, so we're going to get into this book here. And uh, this was one of the first books that I bought um, just right before I went to college, and I took it with me. So the actual book itself has a different image here. And then the, um, the dust jacket here shows the penciled image of this. And it's always weird to see the pencils of Alex Ross because you're so used to the... Um, finished product. We get a nice Batman on the back here. But what's cool about this book is it doesn't just show the art, it, it tells a little bit of Alex's story as well. Like inspiration and growing up and things like that. So I'll take you through it here and um I think I don't know if they have another hardback version. I've seen it reprinted in paperback. With the image, it's got like a Superman with glowing eyes and a pink kind of thing like this around it. But, so it is available, but I don't know if this version, this is the first printing. Nice in image of Wonder Woman there. That's from the uh, short story he did with um, Paul Dini. Kingdom Come image there. Definitely plan on doing a uh, future reading of that. So we delve a little bit here. This is uh, Alex Ross when he is seven. As someone dressed as Superman. And here's some early childhood art of his. And this is about what mine looked like too when I was that age. So you see stuff like that and you're just like, well, with enough hard work and practice, maybe one day, you know. I don't think I'll ever be on this level, but, you know, he's just an amazing artist. So this is him, and this was back in 2004 or 2005 when this book came out. So this is him at his desk then. This is a wax Superman sculpture here based on his work. And then a Captain America bust. And this book was designed by Chip Kidd. He also did the uh, Batman animated series uh, video that I have. He did the book for that one. So I'm trying to remember the exact um, things mentioned here, this genealogy. So I'm trying to remember if his father was an artist too. I think someone in his family did work where they were doing, you know, like the old time advertisements. We see the cigarettes there. But I can't recall. And then here's some more early pictures here. This was the cover and then what he came up with and uh, age so that's age 10 up here and this is age 12 that's pretty good for age 12 honestly so they went from uh, big heads to elongated anatomy here And then he 
made these little paper dolls out of like tubes of cardboard and toilet paper roll. And when I was a kid, I made my own action figures too. I would draw them in hole punch with like the arm joints and the leg joints and put a little brass brad through them and cut out arms and legs and have them move. And uh, I would like draw something and glue it to a cereal box. And we actually sold a few of them in our neighborhood when we were kids as well. So then we look here, we see some inspiration here from Neil Adams and George Perez type stuff. Here's his parents here. And uh, I know his dad made it into the kingdom come as the preacher in there. And I think he's a preacher in real life too. We see a storyboard here. So we uh, move on here and we see influences for Alex Ross. One of them being Norman Rockwell, who uh, I enjoy as well. Uh, the bank that I was at, um, that I went to, me and my family went to growing up, they always gave away uh, calendars every year that featured his art. So that's how I was uh, familiar with them and enjoyed them. But uh, his Kingdom Come covers where all the superheroes are looking at you inspired by this image here so and then we see uh, Andrew Loomis was another inspiration for Alex I've read that uh, Bern Hogarth is too but I am not 100% as I don't see it in here but he was another master of anatomy so we see this is the pencil rough here for the uh, first work that Alex Ross did for DC, which was the Superman Doomsday little paperback book. I remember seeing this too. And then we get into the Superman section here. And we see some recreations. That's the Action Comics first appearance there. More traditional here. And he definitely makes his Superman look more mature. And that's to be in line with whenever Superman was first created. If I remember when Superman was first created was, um, I don't remember out of who from the creative team of Superman either. Um, I don't remember which one of them, but I think one of them had their dad got shot on the street. And so this was like, oh, what if he was bulletproof type of imagination scenario here. So, so we can see the original here and how it ended. But I do like, you know, having Superman be in that kind of midlife phase. I think it works for the character. Kind of adds to the confidence and the power of him, you know. Then we have the classic Superman meets Spidey cover there. Here's the a close-up on the wax sculpture made by him. You know, he did this in Bruce Tim style here. And this is definitely unusual seeing him play in this style because he pulls it off pretty well. If you saw this and didn't know that it was Alex Ross, you could easily mistake it for Bruce Tim's. And here was a cover he did. I think this was for a TV guide, maybe. Oh, this was just for a, um, looks like, just for a Superman Adventures comic. I didn't read all these growing up, but I read a few of them, so. 
I know that was a TV guide one there. Here's some more of them here, Smallville. And this was the one that popped up in my feed again here recently, this 9-11 tribute here. Superman being impressed by the everyday men and women who serve to protect and keep order. And of course we have the Superman, um, I'm trying to remember the name of it now, but I did do a reading of this story on my channel, and I'd like to do readings of the other stories in that big book too. I think this is just called Peace on Earth, but I'll leave a link to that below in my description if you want to check it out. And it's also like a soft-spoken reading, but it's in my earlier days, so sound quality is not quite as good as here. Here's the Batman section here. I think this is all just from the uh, war on crime story. And then once again we see a cover recreation there. Old toy for inspiration. I know they did put out a, a book of his penciled work too called uh, Rough Justice. So it's just his concept work like this and not his finished work like that. But I don't have that one either. So here we see a wax sculpture of Batman. The detail with the actual eyelashes there. iconic Harley and Joker. What's funny here is, is uh, the model he used for the Joker was actually himself for this image. Another iconic one here. Batman with the scars on his back. He did that for uh, Batman black and white. The more reimagined stuff there. And we have a nice Joker image here. I don't remember if that was for black and white as well. I think so, yeah. And here's Robin's origin. And then this is part of that same collection here, I believe. Some Batman Beyond there. Now I do wonder a little bit, when Alex Ross designs his costumes, they do tend to have like a, typically have a sleek black flow thing going through, like his uh, Spider-Man uh, Earth X he did, and it's Captain America when Bucky took over. I wonder if he had a piece to play in the creation of the Batman Beyond suit. Because it does seem like his style. So here we see concepts and finished images for the um, Batman War on Crime story. Which, like I said, I'd like to do a reading of all this stuff for you guys, too. Love 
this image here. And then here's his Wonder Woman. Again, the toy inspiration. And I believe all these toys here, they did, um, uh, I think it was around 2000 or so, they did one for Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. And they came with a book that was designed by a chip kid. So I think all these are actually from that line. And I am interested in the very least of acquiring those books and checking those out here too for you all if I can find them but I do remember them so yeah we see Wonder Woman here and same type of thing Wonder Woman looks like she's probably uh, maybe mid 30s but you know she's way older than that but you know she definitely doesn't look like a young lady she's She's in the middle stage there, and very strong and powerful. You can see muscle definition on her. You can see Shazam here. Shazam was a character that I wasn't ever really too crazy about, but uh, he is interesting. And uh, he is one of the more uh, powerful heroes, I guess. I remember in the Kingdom Come story, he makes Superman bleed out of his ears when he fights him. So I always thought that was pretty intriguing. And this is the story... They did a Shazam story too in that big book. Classic Lantern and Flash there. Doctor Fade and the Spectre. I just thought the Spectre was interesting as a kid. I don't know much about the character, but interesting nonetheless so this is the Sandman stuff here I don't know um, in which books he did that in here uh, just this gallery of dreams so and then mystery theater annual And then the next section here shows the whole team of the Justice League. And I never read, he did like a mini series too. I think it was just called Justice. This is in the big book too, but the other series is not. I remember this is a wizard cover here. I think it actually came out around Thanksgiving time. Could be wrong though, but I vaguely remember seeing it around then. And then we see some inspiration from Queen for his shadow lineup that he's done here. And he did a similar one for um, Marvel too, but the original Avengers. And we see Aquaman here. Yeah, in case you haven't noticed, Alex tends to make most of the established heroes look like they're like almost middle age. They're not elderly, but mature enough to know what they're doing, you know? And I think it helps. I really do. <laughs> Plastic Man. You'll see in a little bit the references for these are pretty ridiculous green arrow there's Hawkman there the atom 
have some flash here. I'm surprised he didn't do a full flash story. It was always weird. They did one for Shazam, but they didn't do one for for Flash. So here's some of the ladies here. Christmas plate. Some early mad stuff he did when he was. Let's see. I just, yeah, I think this one was just when he was little. We know that's much later. I think it says 2002 for this one here. Then this one he did in. Um, correlation with Bruce Tim. I think Bruce Tim uh, just did the full thing through here and then maybe Alex painted over it here. I've seen him do that a few times with like some Jim Lee pieces and things like that. So I know it is possible. Just not sure how it works, you know. Some more iconic image there of this here. I believe that's Superboy. Yeah, I definitely thought this was kind of crazy here. Uh, it says Portraits of Villainy. Basically, Alex Ross did all this concept work as well as this picture here. Yeah, they were going to make a cover series with all the DC villains done by him but uh, they did not publish this so he did all this work here and um, they didn't end up using it so that's pretty crazy I think could you imagine telling Alex Ross that you're not going to go with this concept especially after he did all that work Hopefully they still paid him something for his trouble. Here we see some Alan Moore stuff here. The Watchmen and everything. This Crisis cover here. And I think this is going to show the full thing. It was a giant image. Yeah, I think they used this on a more current graphic novel collection of it. And then here's the Kingdom Come stuff. So this right here is a little bit of Alex's uh, concept stuff here for uh, Kingdom Come. You see the parallel between it, Superman and Samson and Jesus here. Some more here. Rough. And then, yeah, there's his dad. It's this character here. We see a lot of the heroes here aged up. Remember that was a huge thing when the book came out. Seeing everyone older and then Batman having been through so much there was kind of like a hybrid mechanical thing with his suit. Which um, they are using a lot of these elements here in the big um, CW event that's unfolding. So yeah, I've seen the pictures of uh, Kevin Conroy in the um, the bat suit, like the top portion of it, the bracing. So here we see Green Lantern's armor as well. Remember when these toys came out? These were some of the first DC 
collectibles that they put out. Shazam. And then I remember later on the um the Justice Society, I wanna say in two thousand and eight maybe, they did a series where they re picked up Kingdom Come. So uh, Alex Ross still helped with that, even though it was um, with an ongoing series. I remember he did the covers for it. And then I think it was like a 12-part series, maybe. And then there were a couple one-shots, one for uh, Magog and maybe even one for Superman. I can't remember. But I remember they did this weird concept thing where they used Alex's pencils but they like inked over them and stuff like you could still tell it was his work but he had approached it in a style that I hadn't seen before I thought was really interesting so I'd like to hunt those down again and yeah see we have the um, Batman stuff here so I saw the picture of Kevin Conroy and it was like from a here up shot with the bracing there and then we see a Bruce Tim style Batman there. And then since Batman's older, he has like a bunch of these robot type of things all over the city to help him fight crime too. Really interesting concept. I think this was part of the cover, if not just a double page spread they did here. Now this was the cover there. So, there's pencils here. I don't want to move this too much because it's at just the right angle where the light's not hitting it. Yeah, I thought that was so interesting that they made uh, Shazam such a huge threat. And then, yeah, this was another concept that uh, never went through, but I, I think they since then have kind of followed this up a little bit with a Justice Society book, where they were going to make a series called The Kingdom that was based in the same universe. And then this is his... Uncle Sam character here and I've never read this but I know it's more on the uh, mature side of things you see some modeling there I know so this shows some of the images here deals with like a lot of the racism of the country previously and stuff finger here I'm definitely curious to read it I've just haven't ever come into contact with it so Here's the process here. So we see him. He makes a lot of the suits and has his different people wear them. Who he feels fit. The style here. He does use photo reference. But I don't think he does all the time. But it definitely helps achieve more realism. And then he does the whole thing. I don't know if this is an ink wash or not. But he does the whole thing in gray tones first. And then he goes over it with color gouache. It's 
a lot of time goes into it. And I'm not sure, uh, on average, how long it takes him to do a picture or not, but I would imagine it's a, a little while. So yeah, we see some more of the modeling here. <laughs> There's the plastic man. More concept stuff here and then we have this fun little story they did here this is pretty much like Superman losing control Batman doing a contingency here pulling out the kryptonite ring and taking the fight to old Brainiac who was somehow able to control Superman here. So we see his sources here. And yeah. All right, well that's gonna do it. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you wanna see. And as always, you all have a super slumber. Thanks. Bye.